Yo, this is Dapper Abitogan, former Sunshine, Watford and Wickham player. You're now listening to Chris Bassey on Sports Cruise on 91.9. Stay locked in, stay tuned. Yes, yeah, sir. This is still Breeze 91.9 FM and of course it's Sports Cruise right here. Talking about the son of the soil. Dapper Abitogan was once a Sunshine Stars FC player. Then he left the shores of Nigeria. But he's back, he's back here. Yeah. I think I came here when I was at two, and then the next time I came here wasn't until I started playing football here. They were always asking me to come here, and I was just like, nah. One day, I just, I just got the call again to come. Yeah, I just thought, why not? Came here, and yeah, it was an experience. My heritage was in me from early. Because my mum, she always raised us to be Nigerian. So whenever people ask me where I'm from, the natural thing to say is just, I'm Nigerian. Football is the main thing here. The happiness of the nation can just turn like that. The only thing that's bigger is politics, but that doesn't bring happiness to people. Football legit brings happiness. No matter how rich, how poor you are, football brings everyone together in this country. I'm just happy to be part of that. My name is Adeni Alaba. I'm a footballer of Sunshine Stars of Korea. So is this where you're from? Yes, see wow. my mom. You look alike. How are you doing, man? I'm fine. Do you have to like support everyone? Because I can yeah. tell everyone looks to you in this place. Yes, so I need to work very hard. I remember even when I was here before, Sunshine were known to have money. How has it affected your life? My life changed. Get some money and everything was changed for me. Even my dad, my mom, everything was changed for them. I like my family more than any, anything in this world. So if you have money and you cannot support your family, you don't have anything. Oh, playing in Nigeria is not only playing for yourself. Sometimes what you're doing for a living, you have to feed your family. Do you feel like when you get paid, you have to, it's your duty to... to... I go to Overnish, buy some things. And if I know more children, they don't even go to school. So I like to give, it, give the person the money to go and pay for. Oh, wow. So I'm, I'm trying. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's good. The money is not enough to do that. Is that part of the reason why you just want to go abroad? Yes, you just need to leave Nigeria and go and play in Europe. Oh. America! Ronaldo! Oh. Oh. I wish to play in Spain. I wish to play for Barcelona. Why do I want to play in Europe? That's the best place to play. You can do everything for your family. You can't compare Europe money with Nigeria money. the stadium yesterday yeah. uh, to witness the training of Sunshine Stars FC, your uh, former team. What's, what's your assessment of the team? I think the team has changed a lot. From what I can see, it's just a matter of if they want to play. Okay. If they want to play, I don't think there's many people that can, that can beat them. Mm. One thing I wanted to do is shine the light on Nigerian football. They just think life is easy. They're getting however much money. Whereas when I was here, they were owing us like five, six months salary. Mm. That's the main reason why I decided to leave. In Sunshine now, they are owing us like five more salary. If they owe you money, you wouldn't just not play. You will still play. Whereas over there, you recognise that you're the reason that people come to watch you play football. But over here, they act as if you owe them something. How much is money a factor? Does money motivate where you go? Yeah, is it's money... morning. Everything is morning. Football in Nigeria is morning. So this is your first house? Yes, it's my first house. And you're happy and you're proud. I'm proud. I'm proud to have a house. Is it not good? It's very good. It's very good, huh? I feel so happy. I'm happy to be here today. How long did it take you to build this place? Two and a half years. Why? Because our money is not regular.
In Nigeria, you can't earn good money here. Like this month, our salary never paid. So how you want to maintain yourself? I think this is only peculiar with Sunshine. Sunshine uh, is, is, is a difficult yeah, team, man. Very, very difficult. And the thing is, if they were run and properly... it's affecting them. If they were run properly, it'd be, they'd be the best in, in Nigeria. Easy. Yes, yes. Easy. Dapo Abichogun is now joining me this day. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good morning. How would you describe the experience of the MPFL then? It's different. There's no rules. Hmm. Very good players. Naturally gifted more than in England, naturally. I don't need to tell you welcome to Nigeria. This is your country. So no, that's my country. Yeah, because it's welcome here. Indigen. Indigen. There's a lot of Nigerians in, in London. It's easy to feel Nigerian. But when I came here and they welcomed me straight away, it was like you're home and everyone looks like me. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Welcome. I'm happy to see you. You are welcome. Ah. You are fatter than me. <laughs> Man. Yeah, I'm a big man. Mm -hmm. So when is it now? When is what? The rating. Oh I know this is who you want who you want is for me to just go get married. I want to see your baby. I want to see your kids. I want to see my kids. Yes. <laughs> you big man. Ha. Ask him. <laughs> On your money, Lala. Ask him. What is wrong, Abi? My football background, you know, I was a coach, the, the best under 17 uh, nowhere has ever produced. Later I became an agent, yeah. buying players, going to Turkey, Italy, Spain. Where we do live in, uh, in Oslo, a lot of foreigners, and there are a lot of Nigerians there, yes. Actually, they you know Nigerians now, they, they dominated their universities. <laughs> You understand me? <laughs> they dominated their universities. The way we approach things in Norway is very, very different from Nigerian, you understand me? Mm. What, uh, do you, what do you enjoy most about being chairman? You know, it is my first time in life to have a multitude of people, mm. a lot of characters that you must manage. This is just the challenge for me. Yeah. And I enjoy it so much. Every day, I enjoy to have contact with human beings. Yeah. And that is fantastic. It's interesting to see as well, because when I came to the ground the other day to watch the match, I was surprised to see you sitting there. Yes, I see that. I was surprised to see you because yes. When I was here, the chairman, yeah. he'll sit far. He's, just, he's, <laughs> he's so far, but like you, you sit there and yeah. you kick every ball with, with the team. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's refreshing to see. back away from football on a personal note it's just good to just feel like I'm home again I feel like it sort of rebalanced me I think it's the whole being black in a black country it's just I'm comfy when you're in the western world even though you're comfortable I'm comfortable in UK but subconsciously I know when I'm in certain place I've got to behave a certain way I've got to speak a certain way I don't have to do that here I can just come and just be my authentic self so if I want to be loud I can be loud. Black men getting stopped by police all the time, getting battered by police. You're still frowned upon when you go in for that job and they're looking at you like straight away because you've got black skin, like you're, you're a thug. So when I'm here, I don't have to deal with any of that. And that's because I belong here. And I think it's deeper than the physical. I was saying when we were coming at that, one thing I'm looking forward to most is putting my feet on the ground and just rebalancing. I know it sounds cliche, but football's my first love. To this day, I love it. What I don't enjoy is everything away from football. So like the politics that comes with it. There's politics everywhere, but in Nigerian football, the politics affects the team. And when I say politics, it's real politics. Imagine Labour and Conservative and Tories having an impact on Arsenal. It can't happen. Whereas over here, whoever the leading party is, has a say when it comes to the team because the team is owned by the government. 
how did you get this job? How did you hear about it? I'm the chairman, I'm the president of APC in Norway. When the party was elected in, they said I should put in the, um, an application. I met the governor privately, and that was it. And the day we met him, that was the day. And it was like that. So, Just came in, said now you, you have the job. Just like that? Yes. But if you didn't play football, what would life be like? like what, what would you do? I want to do politics. Politics? Uh, yes, in Nigeria, because, because it's money. Yeah. money. <laughs> <laughs> Nigerians loving money is, is a stereotype that won't go because they love money. Here, if you ask someone to help you carry something, the first question they ask is, how much will you give me? And the thing is, it's fine, but I get it when Alaba and all of these players complain or when it, because what the heck is that? Wow. Is that just a cow's head on the back of a, what the heck? <laughs> ah, goodness me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this place never ceases to amaze me, you know. Ah, look at that tongue. Oh my gosh. Nah. That's anarchy. <laughs> That's anarchy. I can be... Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, no, I was just saying, I can see why it's draining for the footballers here when they have to keep giving money, money, money. That's good. That's good money. Money soon, money soon, soon, soon. There's no money on me now. There's no money soon. Let me ask you something. England fans, yeah. uh, ask them the money. Please, I need money, give me money, give me money. There's no way that, that can't happen. Uh, that's the fans of Nigeria here. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't give them, they look at you, they'll boo you. Yes. That time, you know, one of the fans attacked me. I said, I don't have money. So you already given him money? Yes, before we traveled to Egypt. So when we came back, he asked me another one. I said, I don't have money. From back, just give me stick. I said, yeah, still, the mark is there. Oh wow. So that time just got him arrest and they want to jail the guy. Is he still in jail? No. I just begged the policeman to release him because he's my fans. Are you joking? Yes. And they released him? Yes, they released him. Just because yeah. you're you play football? Yes. The supporters in Europe they contribute money to support their clubs. Yes. Am I correct? But it's the other way around <laughs> in here. <laughs> yeah, you're telling me. <laughs> you must pay the supporters when yeah. they want to travel to see your matches. Yeah. And I've never witnessed that in my life. You see, see dollar, one one dollar. I need hundred dollar. <laughs> Do the fans ever tell you how to run the team? Yeah, that's one, one of the major things that I, I'm encountering here. Yeah. Say, no, we have a player who can play for you. Let me go and bring the players. How can a supporter bring players <laughs> to a club? Supporters have so much like influence yes. in the team. In the team, yes. I mean, if they don't want to say they'll boo him, they'll say, you know, girl, they'll, 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 they'll cause trouble. Yes. But if you give them money, yeah, this one, he has to play, this one, he has to play. Exactly. And but then the manager. Yeah. I said no to it. No. Then no to it. Football is my getaway and has, and has always been my getaway. For me, football is life. It affects my mood. When I broke my leg and I wasn't playing football for like 18 months, that was hard because I couldn't leave the house. It's not like I'm not playing football because I don't love it anymore. And those who were around me them times knew how hard it was. I had people to talk to, but I didn't really have to confide in a lot of people because I'm someone that just kind of keeps it in. And that's a big thing in football in regards to mental health. People are speaking about it more because a lot of footballers, when they leave football, they suffer from depression, a lot of them. Unless you're really like talking to yourself or trying to chuck yourself out a window, it's not as easy as it is to get like, the physical help. When you have hard time in football, when the hard time come, you don't need to relax. Just try praying and push it. Push. I'd love to say there's room for vulnerability in football, but the way the game is, it's, it's so hard because it's such a man's game. It's all about results. So if you're vulnerable, that's sad, but can you get out and get us the three points? Can you get out and do your job? If not, then what use are you really to the club? You know, the game doesn't wait for anybody. It's got better because more and more people are sharing their stories of depression. You've got people like Leo McKenzie, who's a 
big advocate. He suffered with depression most of his career. And now it's not till after football he's able to really talk about it. Gary Speed, who was Wales manager, who committed suicide, even though it looked like he had everything. Yeah, and there's just more and more people coming forward where they have to actually do something. They can't just not do anything anymore. So things are getting put in place, which is which is a good thing. When you're a footballer, you, you need to express some things like this. So sometimes it will be fine, sometimes it will be good, sometimes it will be bad. So when you see the bad side, don't discourage. You need to help yourself and bring yourself up. I was told that coming here, you know, I'll get kidnapped. Arm robber will come and take me. But while I was here, I didn't experience one. I'm not talking about me personally, I'm talking about in general. I didn't hear about it. So that was one stereotype which has gone out the window. For all the money that's here and everything, people don't come here for holiday. Because every time you hear about Nigeria, it's about corruption. It's about a kidnapping. That's not real life. Sonny, when last did you have someone close to you kidnapped? In Nigeria? Yeah. About two months ago. Ah, so it's even often. I mean, it was close. But is it, is, it a, is it a regular thing? No, it's not regular. That's it's what I'm saying. Evidence. That's what I'm saying. So then, like, they, they talk about it like it's, it's always happening. Even when I was coming, someone at work, I said I'm going to Nigeria. He goes, oh, is that where they kidnap people? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's just, that's not Nigeria. Yet, they, they just act like all that's here in Africa is the crime and corruption. Don't get me wrong, there's corruption, but then there's corruption everywhere. I just want to show that Nigeria is actually a nice place. In England, I don't really have a lot of family, but here there's so many. Even when you feel like they can be annoying and whatnot, the love that Nigerians have is different. It's such a welcoming place. This is my cousin. Football is the religion in Nigeria, yeah. Because football is what you worship. Football brings so many people together in Nigeria. Even thief, football brings all of us together. It's my everything. We have very good talents here. Mm. Very nice talents here. You know, after Brazil is Nigeria. Even in the World Cup, there was no team more popular or, or, or more supported than Nigeria. Yes. These jerseys, yes. they sold, sold out everywhere. I know. Everywhere. I know. Yeah. yeah. I know. They've never seen anything like it. It's Nigeria is going to overtake Brazil. Yeah. I'm telling you this. What do you think is needed for that talent to be realised? The fundamentals. Yeah. The basic. Our coaches are not there yet. Mm. They must be re-educated yeah. to coach properly. Those are the things Nigeria. They just go and come yeah. and play. Yeah, there's nobody they're, teaches. They're, they're very raw. Yeah, very raw. They're very raw. I noticed straight away the coaching. They just talk. They don't really have the the coaching brain, and you see it with the way the players play. Yes, They've right. got individual ability. Individual, individual ability. ability. But when it comes to a collective, a collective, collective and yeah. doing it on the scale yeah. to match the world, they, they, don't, they don't have exactly. it. Exactly. So this is exactly what is lacking in Nigeria. Yeah. Otherwise, talent, Yeah. talent, they are all, all over Nigeria. Yeah. Every corner, they play, okay. and they play nice. Players here, they have willpower, man. They're, they're strong mentally, they because they put up with a lot. But they persist to go through. It's a tough league. So what they put their bodies through, to train in the heat at times, it's a lot. The training that I did while I was here, I suffered. They continue to travel 13, 14, 15, 16 hours by road. It takes determination in Nigeria and you have to have the passion to play. 
the good things about playing in Nigeria is that if you can endure the hardship playing in the Nigeria League, you can endure the pain, you can endure facing the fan, the talk. If you can endure everything about that, that means you can play anywhere in the whole world. Nigeria shouldn't look, they, they shouldn't be scared of anybody because there's nobody, when Nigeria are playing, there's nobody that can beat them. In terms of football and African football around the world, the first team everyone recognises in African football is Nigeria. Yeah. Things are getting better in Nigeria as compared to what it was before. You know, football is not static. Mm. It's dynamic in character. What's your hopes for Sunshine in the future? I want to make history yeah. to see that, you know, the IGR of Fundo State, that football must be part of it. Yeah. I must sell many good players to the best European clubs. We still have challenges. We still have a lot to go. If you look at the welfare of the players, I'm not so happy. If they get injured, there's nothing to exactly. live on. Look at our national captain, Christian Chuku, yeah. who was in Enugu. He could not even walk. Nobody to take care of him. It should not be done like that. Yeah. They should have a regular team. Mm -hmm. if, they, if they finish with the football, they must be getting some salaries yeah. to live on. Money is the biggest motivator. Mm -hmm. In Nigeria here, yeah. it's, it's the best. Yeah. If you have money here, yeah. you are the best. And if you have no money, you are nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I think being a man means being able to provide, to take care of your people and be that person that, that they can count on. If I go by my culture in terms of Nigerian culture, it means you have to, you have to be strong. To be a man, it's not easy to be a man. You need to get so many things. Not that you get house, you are a man. No, if you are a man, you need to get so many things like money, plenty of money. You can stand by your feet that I'm a man. I don't think being a man comes from how much power you have. I think what you do with that power says more about you than the actual power that you have. I think being a black man, it's not like a weight, but that's the only way I can kind of explain it. You almost have a duty to protect others and to look out for others and to be strong. If you don't do nothing else as a black man, look after your family. And by family, I don't just mean your daughters and your sons. I mean in, within the community, especially the women, man. Especially the women. For me, being a black man, it just, I love it and I wouldn't have it any other way, even though it does get a bit hard sometimes. Now, every person of colour, I truly believe you need to go back to the motherland in some way, shape or form, because it just gives you a sense of purpose, it gives you more of a focus and there's that inner peace. I think they call me son of the soil because even though I weren't born and raised here, I'm still here. It's not just my heritage, but it's everything about me, my culture, my people, it's here. Me coming back, I've been given the tag son of the soil because I've come back home. This soil is where I belong.